Ah yes, the CNC rite of passage. Destroyed clamps, wasted wood, and that one time my V-Bit tried to kill me. I was so lost at the beginning, I rage quit for six months. But thankfully I didn't give up, and I learned what the heck this machine was and what it does. Stick around and I'll break down every part of the CNC and all the confusing jargon. So you can start making projects like this one as quickly as possible. Let's get started by breaking down the parts of your CNC machine. Any CNC will have these parts, maybe a couple different variations, but all the names and all the parts will be the same. So these are the linear rails. Uh, there's two of them, there's one here and one there. All right, next is the gantry, which is another foundational piece. It's the piece that runs perpendicular to the linear rails. So this piece right here that moves back and forth is uh, this assembly metal piece goes all the way over to the other side is the gantry. Next is the Z axis assembly or the Z sometimes known as the Z gantry. Um, and it's this piece right here. Next is the spindle or router. Now this is a spindle. It's a VFD spindle. Uh, your CNC may have a router that you have to manually turn on and off and it has a speed dial to adjust the speed. Next are the stepper motors, also called servo motors. So these are the motors on the X, Y, and Z axis, which we'll talk about here in a second. But this is what spins and drives the gantry up and down the linear rails and um, side to side. Next is the drive mechanisms. There's a few different ones depending on what CNC, um, but this one is driven by ball screws. So here you'll see the ball screw. And it literally is spun by the stepper motor. And there's a ball nut inside here that keeps everything solid and it just rotates. And that is what's actually driving your CNC, um, driving your linear rails and your gantry. Next is the bed or the waste board. And this is where your material goes on. You may get some lines on your waste board and it's okay. You can just swap these pieces out um, when they get chewed up. Um, but this is known as your CNC bed or CNC waste board. The next one's really simple, but it's kind of weird. It's called your dust boot or dust shoe. But what it does is it goes around your spindle or your router and it clamps on like that. And your dust hose, in our case, is a shop vac. Your shop vac goes right here. And so it sucks all the dust that the CNC is cutting um, up and out of the way. So dust boot or dust shoe. The next thing are limit switches. Now limit switches, which are these little sensors on each axis. So it's a proximity sensor that when this moves over and, and gets in a certain uh, determined range by the manufacturer, we don't have to mess with any of this, but it senses it and stops it, right? There needs to be something that tells the, the physical parts that, hey, it ne you need to stop. Um, so there's one here, there's one on, uh, basically located at every stepper motor. All right, so the next thing you should never really have to touch after setup, but it's just, if it's ever referred to, and that's your control box. It's the brains of your CNC. That's where all the wires run in. And again, you should never really have to mess with this. Uh, but if you do, or it's referred to, that is your control box where all your electronics um, are housed. Okay, if that seemed like a lot, we need to take a break here and kind of digest these things. And I think the best way to do that is to head to your machine. Look at those individual parts, turn your machine on, home your machine, uh, rapid your machine along uh, the different parts that we explained. Just kind of getting comfortable, not making a project. One of the biggest mistakes beginners make is they jump right in to a really complex project and without knowing the basics. That path takes six months. If you wanna be making cool projects in hours or days and not months, take the time to learn the foundation and you will uh, get to that end result much quicker. But we're not done yet. Let's get into the confusing words that you need to know to be successful. And now we're gonna cover CNC jargon in a way everyone can understand in my backyard. So up first, 
Let's talk about our x and y axis. Imagine our x being the width of our yard and our y axis being the length of our yard. And we're going to imagine our z axis as the height of our grass. Wow, this needs to be cut. What is our work zero, or also known as our x, y, z zero? Well, this is the start point for everything. Everything works off this one origin point. Next is our CAD software. This is where we draw our shapes, also known as vectors. And next is our CAM software. This is where we set up toolpaths. CAM creates your G-code, which is the language your controller speaks. Left, up, right, down, up, right, left. Your feed rate is how fast your bit moves along your vector. Your speed is how fast your bit is spinning. Together, these make feeds and speeds. <laughs> Understanding these basics sets the foundation to CNC success. To help you avoid costly mistakes, I created this free checklist for you to use on every project. Click right here to download it.